To start a new forest pack object using a surface, simply click on forest pack from the create panel and pick a surface from the scene. To edit or update surface settings, add and manage multiple surfaces and add surfaces to an existing forest pack object, open the surface rollout. At the top of the rollout is the surface list. This allows you to add extra surfaces by clicking on the plus button or add multiple surfaces. If you change a surface and wish to update forest pack, simply click refresh. If you'd like forest to update automatically or if the surface is animated and you need the scattered objects to follow the geometry, turn on auto. Surfaces can be used in two modes. The default is XY, which projects objects along their Z axis until they meet the surface geometry. This is ideal for landscapes without steep inclines. For steep inclines, or geometry with slopes greater than 90 degrees from the XY plane, UV mode uses the mapping coordinates of the surface to distribute the objects. In this tutorial we're going to focus on the XY mode. We'll explain UV mode in more detail in a future Tips and Tricks instalment. It's worth mentioning at this point that XY mode uses the surface's face normals direction to place objects, so if a surface doesn't appear to be working, try inverting the normals to see if they're facing the correct direction. This can often be a problem with surfaces imported from other applications. Moving down the interface, the direction slider allows you to align the segments in relation to the surface's face normals. At 0%, the scattered objects follow the surface normal. At 100%, they always face upward, and at minus 100, they face down. When using XY mode, if surfaces are placed one above the other, there are some differences in the way that scattered objects are placed dependent on if the surfaces have been combined into a single mesh object or if they've been individually added in the surface list. If surfaces are added separately, which we call stacked, then each surface will receive scattered objects. Neither surface affects the other. If, however, the surfaces have been combined into a single edit poly object, only the highest polygons will receive scattered objects. Faces below are masked. When altitude limit is on, scattered objects will only appear within the height range defined by the top and bottom values. If you don't want a sharply defined boundary, or if you want to create layers or other effects, then a fall off curve gives you precise control over the density of scattered objects across the range. The rate and extent of the fall off effect is defined by the curve editor, where the x axis plots the altitude range between the top and bottom values. The scale fall off curve works in a similar way allowing you to control the scale of scattered objects over an altitude range. You could, for example, reduce the size of trees at a higher altitude, where in reality, oxygen is thinner. Below this, activating slope range allows you to use the angle of the surface to limit the distribution of scattered objects. The minimum and maximum values define the angle measured in degrees, where zero is fully horizontal and 90 is completely vertical. As with altitude range, you are able to use fall off curves to precisely control the density and scale of scattered objects based on the angle of the underlying surface. 